So guess what guys, I found a high quality BMS that's waterproof online that's rated to 60 amps and it is lithium iron phosphate and it's a 4S model. So I have this tiny battery and we're gonna add a BMS. And it's very easy to do, but I wanna show you guys. And I wanna install this BMS and keep the balance cable so I can still check the balance, so I can see what the BMS is doing in real time. And this might seem confusing, but it's really not. So you have a black wire for negative, you have first cell positive, second, third, and fourth cell positive. This is your balance cable. And then over here we have the main negative that goes out to your devices, and then B negative. And this one goes to the negative of the battery. And so I just added some crimp connectors so we can connect these balance leads to the battery. And on this side, we have a terminal connector that attaches to the negative terminal of the battery. And that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna wire it up real quick. This literally took a couple minutes to build. So I'm gonna attach this BMS on the side of this battery. So we have the negative main, we have the negative balance cable, and we have another balance cable so I can check it with my other balancer. We have first cell positive. So we're gonna take first cell positive on this balance lead, and then first cell positive on here. And it's the one that's right next to the negative. And so we're gonna put these two on the first cell positive. And now we have second cell positive, so we're gonna put these two leads on there and screw them in. So I just connected this BMS and you can see that it's balancing right now. The fourth cell is dropping, but the other ones aren't doing anything. So I'm guessing that it's equalizing this one and reducing it with maybe some resistors on here. And so they claim that this little BMS can handle 60 amps of continuous current. So we're gonna connect it to this 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And we're gonna push 60 amps and see how well it does and if it heats up or not. So I'm not sure if this little BMS can handle the spark generated when charging this capacitor, the initial current. So we're gonna spark it on here and then we're gonna connect it to the BMS. Now everything is connected and we are checking the balance and it looks like this BMS has balanced the cells within 0.01 volts of each other. That's really good. Also, I put an amp meter on the main negative in this wire right here, I'm scared about. I wonder if this can actually handle 60 amps. All right guys, we have a heat gun and we're gonna turn it on and see if we can hit 60 amps. Oh boy, here we go. This is when science is fun. Okay, we're at 23 amps. Everything's nice and cool to the touch. Everything's good. All right, let's push it. All right, 35 amps. 46 amps, 47. Oh my God, you guys, 55 amps. It's working as advertised so far. Okay, now we're getting some warmth about four minutes into it. So far the balance while discharging looks really good. This BMS is balancing while it's discharging. You know what, these wires are feeling nice and cool to the touch. I would say that the connector is much hotter. So yeah, the wires that it comes with are actually pretty good. Everything else feels nice and cool to the touch. And the BMS is not heating up at all. It's doing pretty good. So as these wires increase in temperature, there is more resistance. And so that's why we're seeing a larger amp draw and it's going up and down. By the way, this is not sponsored at all. I bought this on my own with my own money and I'm trying to find a good BMS. So yeah, not getting paid for this. For the final test, we're gonna see if the short circuit protection works. So I'm gonna turn it on and it's at 80 amps, 81, 78. Cool. It did it, it actually turned itself off. Oh, and the beeping was probably from this thing though. I have a low voltage beeper on here, but yeah, this thing actually worked, it turned it off. When it hits 78 and 80 amps, you can feel that now it's warm, but 60 amps continuous, it actually works as advertised. Now we're charging this battery with shore power and I'm watching the balance of the cells and everything looks perfect. But these cells are matched by capacity and internal resistance. So even if this BMS was not there, it would still charge up together. And I think I top balanced them. Yeah, I did because I was using it with this charger. So yeah, there's nothing really remarkable here, but it is neat to see it balance on its own. I'll see these numbers shift and they'll get closer and closer to each other. And right now we're charging at 6.2 amps. So, so far this thing is actually doing a great job. I want to charge it up all the way and see if this disconnects because this likes to go to 14.9 volts. So we'll see what the max 
voltage that this BMS will go to before it cuts off. So it's charging this and it goes up to 14.8 volts and right when the cells hit 3.6 volts each, the BMS protected it and disconnected it from the battery. So that safety feature does work. So in the last test, I was seeing what would happen if I gave an over voltage situation to this battery and it disconnected the charger and that was great. But I thought, I wonder what would happen if I had a charger like an MPPT connected all day long to this battery, giving it a constant over voltage situation. And what I found is that the cell's individual voltage will not exceed 3.6 volts. So right now we've got 3.6, 3.3, 3.3 and 3.4, but the MPPT is not able to feed power into this battery, but it seems like they keep going more and more out of balance. So what I think you need to do after an over voltage situation occurs is that it will protect the cells individually from an over voltage situation, but you're gonna have to disconnect that over voltage source and then discharge and recharge so that it can balance the cells again. So right now I added a heat gun as a load and you can see all the cells have balanced out, which is crazy because I saw them out of balance by quite a bit, but the moment I add this load, they're all at 3.3 volts. So this BMS is actually doing its job. And even under a more substantial load, we're getting the same numbers. They're doing really nicely. Now that we're discharging the batteries, you guys can see that the solar panels are not now charging this battery again. So the MPPT, I didn't have to disconnect it or do anything. It just instantly started charging when the over voltage situation was gone. What's really cool too is that the MPPT still had power. So sometimes the BMS will disconnect the MPPT and you can damage it if it's still connected to the solar panels. But in this instance, it didn't. It still works just fine and the screen was on all day long when I was giving it the over voltage situation. So now what we're going to test is the final safety feature of over discharge protection. So I'm going to use this heat gun and run this battery so low they will have to disconnect power from the inverter. And we'll see if that actually works and at what cell voltage. So now I've been discharging these cells and we're down to 3.1 volts but this BMS is pretty darn warm. The wires are good to go. And this connector right here where we have cheap copper clad aluminum wire is probably the hottest thing on here. But yeah, the BMS is pretty warm. So you want to mount this away from the battery. You do not want to mount these directly to the cells. For me, just testing it, it works great. But yeah, keep that in mind. So it's been about 30 minutes of pulling 55 amps through this BMS and it's pretty warm. So I advise you guys, if you are trying to pull 50 amps, get the 60 amp. But you should have some headroom. It, do not pull a full 60 amps through the 60 amp one continuously. Even though it's rated for it, you're better off you know, stepping it down a little bit so it doesn't get too hot. Because before it wasn't getting hot earlier, but when you do these prolonged high discharge application loads, it will get pretty warm. So the low discharge protection is at 2.5 volts and we have 2.9, 2.8, 2.7, so it's about to disconnect. So we got beeping. Oh, there we go. It did it. So it was at like 2.47 and it disconnected the inverter from the battery. And right now the cell voltages will recover in a few minutes and they'll spike back up again. And that, now I'm going to start charging it. So the over discharge protection actually works at 2.5 volts. And now the MPPT is connected again and we're going to charge it back up. And right now it's charging and all of the cells are still balanced. So I think this BMS is actually doing its job pretty well. So if you guys need basic safety features for your lithium iron phosphate battery, this is a really good BMS to use, but it only has basic features. If you want to have like low temperature disconnect, you're going to have to spend the big bucks, but I found a workaround. So check this out. If you have this BMS and you're not exceeding like 50 amps for the 60 amp model, and you want to have a low temperature disconnect, what you can do is you can make an elaborate relay system and program stuff and use an Arduino, or you can use a Tryron because this is the cheapest MPPT that has a low temperature disconnect for charging. So you have to buy the $10 temp sensor, but you can actually have that function. And the reason why you want this safety feature is that if you try to charge this battery when it's below zero degrees Celsius, it can permanently damage it. 
So having the low temperature disconnect is very important for charging. You can actually discharge these to I think negative 20 degrees or something like that, but you cannot charge it with anything below zero degrees Celsius. So you need that functionality. For me, I live in San Diego, so I will never ever see freezing temperatures. And what I love about this BMS is it has its own case and it's waterproof. Like if you compare it to using these boards, I mean these boards work well, but these tabs are a pain in the butt to solder properly. I start overheating other components that are nearby. And also this says it's a rated for 100 amps. I really don't believe that. And then the solder tabs for the battery terminals, which they're pretty big to be realistic. But I don't want beginners trying to like solder on this little tiny board. Um, you need some experience to know how to do that. So buying something like this, it takes five minutes to set up. Like you literally put terminal connectors, you can buy these from Walmart. You could literally buy all this stuff from like the Dollar Tree, like not really, but you know, it's very easy to find stuff and you can slap this on here in five minutes. If you guys want to use this system long term, do not mount the BMS directly to the battery cells. I mentioned that previously, but you want to have this mounted elsewhere. Also, you want these terminals to be protected and you want to see where these wires are going because you don't want any of these to short. So yeah, mount this maybe on top if you have some plexiglass covering it or some kind of other insulator. But something that I dislike about these BMS systems is this is rated for 60 amps. If you're trying to push, you know, 2000 or 3000 watt inverter through this, you cannot do it. Absolutely not. You could put these in parallel, but then you're going to have all these wires going everywhere. And that's just silly as well. But there is an actual workaround for this as well. So what you could do is put like a 3000 watt inverter on this battery, but instead of connecting it through the BMS, wiring you could have your own wiring go through a battery protect and make your own low voltage disconnect or if you have an inverter with a programmable low voltage disconnect you could use that instead so you could use the bms to balance and to protect between the MPPT for charging and all of that. And then you could have the inverter on its own system. So that means you could spend only 30 bucks over here, maybe 50 bucks for the battery protect, up to like 100 bucks, depending on how much current you're pushing. But that's a really cheap way of doing it. And then I would trust the Victron over any of these cheap Chinese boards any day. So if you have a large load, you don't need to use everything through this. So you have a lot of options for this. You can use a BMS with other safety features. You can build your own BMS. But for beginners, I would say that this is really good. And if you have an inverter that's under 600 watts, you could totally hook this up directly to it and you'd be set. Just make sure you have the low temperature disconnect on the MPPT. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful. This was really fun to test this thing out and it performed very nicely. And I'm gonna leave this on this battery for a couple months and see how well it works if it can stand the test of time. Also, I'm going to have a link below. I am not sponsored at all, but guess what? I bought this just as any other consumer would off of eBay and it says charge and balance your cells before building your pack. Then attach BMS. Contact me with any problems. I help everybody. Ross. So that's really nice of him. And I didn't ask for this. He doesn't know who I am, but he's really friendly. So I think this is a pretty good source and I like this one. Also, these are available on Alibaba for a lot cheaper, but I personally like to buy them on eBay because you can get the fast shipping. I do not like waiting 30 to 50 days for these to come in the mail. I ordered this like two days ago and it's in my hands. I had to spend an extra five bucks or whatever, but I don't really care. And if you guys have any more questions about these, please let me know. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.